Now we're going to talk about sequencing instructions. These are the instructions we use to use branches, if-then-else statements, and loops. Anything where we're going to do different things depending on the data. So sequencing instructions make decision. The decisions they make are what instructions to execute next. Should we do the next instruction or jump somewhere else? They change what's called the control flow of the program, where the program is going. So MIPS has two conditional branch instructions, and they are BNE, or branch not equal. So this instruction is going to say that if register 0 and register 1 are not equal, then the next instruction goes to this label address. If they are equal, then the next instruction just goes on to the next instruction. And there's also branch equal, and branch equal branches if they are equal. So here if R3 and R4 are the same, then we go to the label instruction next, otherwise we go on to the instruction after this. So let's take a look at an example. I want to do the following code. If I is equal to J, then H equals I plus J, otherwise we do something else. So I'm going to put my data in registers, so R1 is I, R2 is J, and R3 is H. And now we're going to write out the MIPS code for this. So I'm going to do branch not equal R1, R2, skip. So this is going to say if R1, which is I, and R2, which is J, are not equal, I jump to skip. So if they're not equal, I'm going to jump to skip. Then I'm going to have add R3, R1, R2. This is the same as this line here. So if they're not equal, I'm going to jump to the skip, and the skip is right after here. So what happens here is if they're not equal, I'm going to skip over the addition. If they are equal, I'm not going to skip the addition, and I'll do the addition. So that gives us the execution we want here. So here's my conditional branch. If they're not equal, I skip over the next thing, and then I'm done. But if they are equal, then I'm going to go ahead and do the addition, which is exactly what I want in the code. In addition to conditional jumps, we also have unconditional jumps. So jump label just jumps regardless of anything else. It always says go to the label. So let's take a look at an example here with an if then else. So here's the example I had before. If i equals j, I'm going to add i and j. If they're not equal, then I'm going to subtract them. So how do we write this code? So I'm putting my values in the same register files. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to do my first branch. Branch not equal r1, r2. So if i and j are not equal, I'm going to jump down to do else. If they are equal, I'm going to continue and do the addition. Then I'm going to jump to skip else. So if they are equal, I'm going to do the addition and then skip the else. If they're not equal, I'm going to jump to do else, which is down here. And right after do else, we have the subtraction. And then right after that, we have skip else. So let's take a look at what this is doing. So if i equals j, we're going to, do, we're going to want to do this addition here. So we do branch not equal. If they're not equal, we're going to skip the addition. So if they're not equal, we skip over the addition and go down to do the else part of the code. If they are equal, we go ahead and do the addition, and then we need to make sure we don't do the else part. So we have this jump which skips over the else part. So if they are, not, if they are equal, we do the addition, and then we skip over the else part. And if they're not equal, we skip over the addition and we do the subtraction, or the else part. So this is how we use an if and else. We need both an a con unconditional jump, so we always skip over the else part if we've done the if part, and we need a conditional branch so that we decide whether we should do the else part or the if part. So these instructions change the program counter. They change the flow of the instruction, and we've seen two of them. We've seen jump, which goes to a label no matter what, and the branch not equal and the branch equal, which only go to the label if the registers are equal or not equal. Let's take a look at another example. So here we have if a equals b, then c equals 1, else c equals 2. So here's the code, and let's figure out how to do this in MIPS. So we've got our registers. So a is in R5, b is in R6, and c is in R7. They're color-coded to be easy to see. So the first thing we're going to do is branch not equal R5, R6, else. So if they're not equal, we're going to skip down to the else. Makes sense? If they are equal, we need to set c to 1. How do we set c to 1? Well, we do add immediate, and what do we add? We add r0 and 1. So this is always 0, so this is going to do 0 plus 1 and store it into r7. So that's going to set c to 1, 
if we do the if part. Now if we've done the if part, we need to make sure we don't do the else part, so we'll put in the same jump skip else that we had before. Otherwise, if we get down to else, here we need to set c to be 2. So how do we set it to 2? Well, we use another add immediate again. We're going to add 0 plus 2, so r7 will be 2. And then when we're all, and then here's where the skip else is. So if we're not doing setting it to 2, we jump down to here. So what happens here? Well, first we check and see if we should do the if part. And if we shouldn't do the if part, then we jump down here and skip to the else part. If we should do the if part, we're going to go through here. Here's the else part. Now when we do the if part, we do our addition, and then we need to skip the else part so we have this jump to skip over the else. So the key thing to remember here is we're using this conditional branch to decide whether we should do the if or the else, and then if we do the if, we use this unconditional jump to make sure we don't also do the else. Let's take a look at how a loop works. So here's a loop for j equals 0, while j is less than 10, we increment j, and what do we do in our loop? We do b equals b plus j. Here are our registers. So what do we start off with? Well, we start off putting 0 into r5. So we need to set j to be 0 at the beginning. Now we're going to want to check and see if j is less than 10. But we can't compare to 10. We can only compare between registers. So if we want to compare j and a register, we need to put 10 into a register first. So here we go. We do add i, r1, r0, 10. This puts 10 into register 1. Now we can go and do the comparison, because now we have 10 in register 1, and now we can do a branch equal between R5, which is J, and R1, which is 10, to do this comparison. So now we're saying if J equals 10, then we're going to go to exit. If J is not 10, then we go ahead and do the addition. We increment J by 1 by doing an add immediate, and then we branch up here, we jump back to do the loop again. So here's our loop instruction, which is checking if we should exit. And if we do exit, we go down here. And when do we exit? We exit when j is 10. So if we exit when j is 10, this loop is going to be true as long as j is less than 10, because we're incrementing j by 1. Now what do we do for our loop? Well, we go through and we do the additions in the loop, and then we go up and we repeat it again. So here's our loop. We go around and around until we get to j equal to 10, and then we exit. And as you can see here, this exiting part of the loop this jump here is basically the equivalent of this curly bracket in our for loop up there.